Dog fans, it's time to hunker down. I'm Jeremy, the Impact York. He is Jake, Trash Panda Skinner. It really does help when I read the screen. <laughs> and we it. are here to, uh, well, hunker down with you in between the hedges. This Impact Media's weekly dive right into the world of the UGA Bulldogs, the current number one team, and back-to-back -back national champions. How are you, Jake? I'm good. It's Monday. It's Monday. All day long. It's Monday all day long. Just ready for Monday to be not Monday. <laughs> well, in a little over five hours, it will not be Monday anymore. Thank the Lord. <laughs> it is because of him, but that's a whole different podcast. We'll yes, that is. Then we will uh, we'll work on that one. Maybe that's Impact Media After Dark or something. But a lot to get into. We're going to do a uh, bigger preview because, well, because this team is finally going to start playing uh, pretty – Closer to them competition. I, these <laughs> Their competition this week is not that close to them, but a lot closer than they've seen recently. But mm -hmm. let's jump right into uh, the game this weekend or this past weekend where I, Trent, the, the fighting Trent Dilfers of, of uh, UAB because he got <laughs> he got more screen time than I think the entire UGA roster. And, hey, more power to him. I mean, in a way, he was kind of the Dion before Dion. But uh, – they get 21 on the board. I give them a lot of credit for that. You could say they scored against this or that, but they actually got it progressively throughout the game. So let's start there. Let's kind of give them their flowers and say UAB kind of they did okay. push hard for a minute. They did push hard. I mean, they I mean their quarterback threw for 250 yards there. Uh, Zeno, mm -hmm. my light's coming on. Uh, but yeah, he he did pretty good. He found some soft zones in the coverage. Uh, he exploited uh, Pop Johnson. That's his nickname. Number 10 on the defense. He's not. He, I'm learning he's not good at taking angles. He's got to work on that, or he needs to sit on the bench and let the freshman play because that freshman's better. Um, they kind of let some stuff slide. We had the one thing that helped was three fumbles, mm -hmm. two of them that were lost. That did not help anything on Georgia's end. Um, tackling could have been just a touch better, depending on the play for Georgia. Not taking anything away from you to be on that one, but um, I think they just found some. They got some good calls and some good luck on their way with a few possessions like that uh, two-minute drill. Georgia just got their butts handed to them for two minutes and oh, yeah. came back out swinging. So, like I said, I do want to give them credit. You know, it was partially uh, the way Georgia was playing them, but also it was, hey, you still have to execute, and UAB executed a lot. The, like I said, Trent mm -hmm. Dilfer had this team ready to play. Uh, he he really is an exceptional coach. His, uh, what is it, seven-on-seven seven or whatever that camp he runs. Yeah. Like, I think it's 29 of 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL came through that system. So, you know, there's something to that system. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. I think he's going to have a good time at UAB. Mm -hmm. He's got a team that's really going to do something at some point in time. He's just going to need the right players, and it's going to take a few years to get his yeah. his system in place. Yep, exactly. But this show's not about the uh, UAB. What are they, the Dragons? Uh, Blazers. Blazers. Same yeah, same as Valdosta. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But Dragon not, mascot, yeah. Yeah. It's not about the, the Blazers. It's about the UJ Bulldogs. They put 49 on the board. Probably mm -hmm. could have put more, but I, I think that was a good number. You you didn't want to rub it in too much. Kirby didn't want to do that to deal for He didn't want to be he didn't want to do a Miami Dolphin. No. 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 That's no, but Oregon sure did. Yeah. I I don't I kind of feel and don't feel bad for the state of Colorado this weekend. I feel bad because I don't think there's enough snow to go skiing, but I don't feel bad no. that that's what happens when you actually play competition with a defense. Yeah, both sides. But anyway, I sorry, I couldn't resist that one. I've been sitting on that one all day. But no, Georgia played good. Beck finally did it. Give Mike mm -hmm. Bobo credit, all you haters. Bobo did something that he needed to do. I said it last time. He needed to force Carson to throw it. Mm -hmm. He forced Carson to throw it. First play of the game, 33 yards. No, it wasn't a deep shot. We did take one. He, Missed off the fingertips. The other one was just, I think. Anyway, I didn't. I did. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to watch all the game, but I got to catch the highlights. And I was live tweeting, <laughs> get to catch up. <laughs> so there was some good and bad with it. Um, but Georgia overall, they're starting to see it. You're not seeing the running game take off like you want. But to be honest with you, a lot of Brock Bowers and the screen game that is an extension. Mm -hmm. So they're doing it to keep some stuff because we don't have the healthiest room. So why why keep pounding our backs back there over and over and over? and risking injury but um beck had his best game i think the lights coming on this team's ready to unload 
I think they're finally starting to see it. And Bobo calling some plays that he did call that was that said something right there. Yeah, it definitely did. The first couple notes I wrote down about this game was the UGA air attack was early and often, like you said. Uh, Bowers had a fumble earlier, early in the game, really early in the game, but Mm -hmm. I felt like it was because they were finally pushing the tempo. And I think he just got just slightly ahead of himself because he corrected and didn't miss a beat pretty much from here on out. I think it just, you know, tackle too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think it has something to do with that too. But I just think he felt he was just uh, because of the tempo, he was trying to rush it a little bit. And uh, he didn't, like I say, he didn't do it the rest of the day. No, he was perfect. I mean, they've learned what they got to do. I mean, if you were to look at the stats, he had nine receptions. Mm-hmm. No one else cracked more than three. Like mm-hmm. if that tells you too, and I think I read a stats. You'll have to forgive me. I'm looking through my notes here. Um, it's not about Brock. I'm trying to think. Yeah, here we go. He had nine targets, nine receptions, two touchdowns, and you want to guess how many of his yards came after the catch? Of his 121 yards, how many came after the catch? 96. 111. He averaged 12.3 yards after the catch. That's insanity. Well, that's what they always tell you is you you get your playmakers in space and let them make plays. And especially when yeah. – I mean, that that's what helps Carson Beck is, is that you go, you know what, we're going to give you some good, safe, not necessarily easy, but we're going to give you some good throws to get your confidence mm-hmm. up, get the ball in Brock Bowers' hand and Rosemary Jack Saint. Uh, Dejon Edwards, you know, those you, guys it. that can That's make the plays. That's guys you want. And yeah, you, just, they, you just let them go. Yeah, they finally opened the playbook up. Bobo knows what he's doing. He knows what guys he's got. Mm-hmm. He just needed them to believe in themselves. So he's got it. He's pushing it. I think George is going to push the ball the rest of the year. Like, this is the air attack that we've been wanting. Beck's game is centered around throwing the deep ball. If we just got to connect on him, I think otherwise you see another 40, 40, 50 yards him throwing for. But – I think against Auburn and stuff like that, like you're going to see us get to air the ball out and do what we need okay. to do. We Georgia knows they can win with the passing game, but Kirby is going to want to body you up front for four quarters. Oh, yeah. I was going to save this for the end, but I think they're going to put the air in Jordan Hare this weekend. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. But, uh, you know, I, here's something I kind of noticed. I know that Beck, Vandegrift, and Stockton are all slightly different in the way they play, but this team is set up to where – if something happens to Beck or they decide to bench him, if something happens to Vandergriff or mm-hmm. they decide to bench him, no matter which of those three are in the game, it's still set up to where they're not going to have to move the offense all that much. It may be no. one or two schemes here or there, but it, it's not, oh, well, our starter's out, but our backup, he does this more because we're going to have to shift now. It's like, no, everybody is pretty much, it's all set up to where whoever they want in the game, they can still run this offense just as good. They can. Uh, Vandegrift is going to run the ball more. That's just mm-hmm. what he does. He did have that 18-yard run where he was booking it. Oh, I yeah. give him credit. He was moving. But that's his game as a running quarterback, He's he hasn't developed as a passer. The problem with him is he throws fastballs. Mm-hmm. He's going to roll as Chapman. He's just going to throw you a fastball over and over and over. He's he Brett doesn't, Favre. Brett Favre, excuse me. He is a Brett Favre. <laughs> He's going to just – he doesn't know how to layer yet. Brett Favre right. learned to layer the throws. Beck has learned to layer his throws. That's what mm-hmm. good quarterbacks do. Stockton has learned to do that more. I think I've read that Stockton has a better grasp of the offense mm-hmm. than Vandegrift. It's just I think that they're going with Vandegrift early and often to get him some tape, get him comfortable to the in case of emergency they have both. But they're also um, – Vandegrift is kind of like the one quarterback right now that most fans are feel that would transfer out at the end of the year. So they're kind of giving him some tape, I think, and giving him a chance to shine and say, look, you show out, you got to fight for it next year. But he's – he looks good, but whenever he comes in, I'm always like, well, let's just see, and he just pulls and runs, and I'm like, there it is. But Stockton did good despite the pick. I really think he had a good pick. I think it was a fairly okay read on that pick. Um, he just looked like he tried to force a ball in there, and he tried to yeah. fire one instead of lofting. He put a little yeah. air under that. That's a perfect catch on the sideline back shoulder. He just tried to force it too too much. Yeah, it's the timing. But uh, oh, yeah. anything anything else on the offense before we swap to the defense? Um, offensive line has finally looked doing the job. They finally yeah, look they're look getting good. there. Uh, left left tackle. Um, Ernest Green. I think his lights coming on. I think he was the highest graded. Yeah, I think 
If not, he was, yeah, he was the highest. He was he, he was, was the highest graded on PFF. He was like eighty eight percent, which was the t- he had zero pressures on thirty seven snaps. He keeps doing that as a redshirt freshman. That bodes well because of injuries. Yeah. You know, people talked about trust moving, taking Green out because he's struggling. The light came on for him. Like it's crazy that the younger kit guys are blocking better than the right. The right side's full of juniors and seniors, and this and a senior center the left side's blocking better on the run right now mm-hmm. i don't know what it is but those boys are mauling fairchild and um micah morris at left guard interchanging out those are some boys right there so but that, yeah. I mean, that's really it i'm just offense on a whole they did great they were the clear leader compared to the defense being the better unit oh yeah this def in a segue for you the defense that was not their best game they no. struggled yeah, I would say that they only had the one sack. I think that was Brinson that had that. Uh, it seemed uh, like Warren they were Brinson's they were doing more. On. Oh, he is. And, and I mean, he he had a pretty good game. But it seemed like to me, and once again, it could just be the scheme. Maybe against UAB, they were they were trying a few things. Uh, it seemed like it was more about uh, contain and more about mm-hmm. swarm, and it wasn't really go after UAB. And that's probably part of why they got twenty one points. Yeah, I think you see – like, we got a lot of freshmen playing, looking at the numbers. Chaz only had the one tackle. He didn't get to do too much. But um, a lot of the different stuff that I'm seeing here, admit, the linebackers and secondary really made a lot more plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, Munden, Small Munden is looking like that dude at linebacker. He's got a lot of talent. Oh, yeah. Lasseter keeps shutting down his side of the field. Um, Everett, who is really talented, he got – a few throws against him. I kind of would like to see Humphrey come in more often because Humphrey has the body to handle the bigger receivers. Yeah, I think they need to kind of swap those guys in and out depending on who they cover, but you never know what they're thinking. Um, Brinson, though, is coming on. He's turning finally, finally turning on that light and understanding what his job is and bodying guys. Uh, it was, I believe, it was him. Uh, I'm looking at the I think it was him that basically pushed the quarterback back in or the the center into his own quarterback. I on that so. one play, I think so. That's some that's a man strength right there. And then they let uh, C.J. Allen, uh, who is my pick for the to be the next Roquan because he's that size, six one, two thirty five, true be. freshman. They already compare him because he has the speed. And he, as a true freshman, since before the first game, they've already been t- teaching him play calls, and he's already learning how to take that over from Munden. So when Munden leaves, Allen knows how to do the play. So Munden's already next year's starter. So I think you're. I would like to see him play more than D- Jamon Dumas Johnson, because I think he's got the speed and the. He seems to react faster than Johnson does. Yeah, Johnson that, let a few plays by him that we should not have. That shouldn't have been big plays. I, I think that's a fair assessment, and and I think he, you know, both those players would probably attest to your judgment there on that. Uh, it's it's just crazy that you know you start the year and and. We know about people like uh, Malachi Starks and Tyke Smith, and and yet every week it's like a new set of three or four other guys that either we haven't heard about or we just don't say their name a lot that mm-hmm. suddenly they're at the top of the stat sheet or they're at the top of the highlights. No, yeah, it's that is something that is that does tend to happen. Um, Georgia is that bunch of players like they are all big names in recruiting. Mm-hmm. We've got a good group of guys. It's not Kirby's most talented team, but I do think this one. This team, if they they've been trying to put stuff together, and I think the wheels are ready to start rolling. We'll see what happens at this one. If they struggle, then I think it's Georgia fans like as as a Georgia fan, if we struggle against Auburn and it looks like we just don't know what we're doing, just go ahead and pump the brakes. This isn't going to be a title team unless something miraculous happens, and it could. But I think they still have a ways to go and put the, everything together because they don't like to give out too much tape. Either <laughs> they don't like to give out too much tape until the end of the year like Ohio States and TCUs and other teams do because they don't have to. But I th- we're going to see what happens in this next game. I'm, I like where they're at. I think we're they're close. They're close to being what we need to see. Yeah, and I know this was just situational. Uh, Makai Muse is definitely still that dude. He can always take a, a, a kick or a punt back no matter what. But he got popped. I actually, he did. And I like actually that uh, Andrew Paul had a, had a decent – Showing, but Dylan Bell with that thirty yard when he ran back and the one the one kick that he caught, uh, it's good to know that you got more than one of that dude that can that can take one back. And you know, I wouldn't mind if Dylan Bell got a couple more catches. Dylan Bell is a do it all kind of guy. I love seeing him. And our normal guy who we usually have back there, he hasn't played it down yet, and he plays back against Auburn. But we finally get um, McConkey. I love that last name because I always think of the uh, New York Giants in the eighties. 
not no relation to him, but I always think of that guy, McConkey, was scoring a touchdown. But we finally get our number one receiver back, and we haven't missed him. That's a scary thought. Yeah. Georgia has done that. We missed George Pickens for most of the year, our first title year. Mm-hmm. We missed A.D. Mitchell most of last year, and we've missed our number one guy for most part of this year. If George, it, someone joked that, hey, we're missing our number one receiver, title year. Like, it just seems to be that way. At least under Kirby, because when we missed A.J. Green, we missed A.J. Green. Yeah, that the, that was definitely a, a different style there. <laughs> that was but yeah, different. Yeah, if you, if you didn't mention Lab McConkey, I was too, and, and, uh, it always makes me think of Tacoma FD, and if you guys don't watch that show, you definitely should. It's from the people that did Super Troopers. It's all about a fire station. It's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, but McConkey is two other people's last name on that. Gotcha. I'm yeah, not going to tell you which. You should watch it. Yeah, I I know which ones because I've seen clips of it. I haven't watched all of it yet. But every time I hear Super Troopers, all I can think of is shenanigans. Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, what else are going to say? Oh, I'm um, gonna, I got to mention him. The Thunder from down under averaged 47 yards a punt on his two punts. 51-yarder yep. and then a uh, f- looks like a 43. So uh, Thorson did good. And, hey, special teams didn't let us down when it came to kicking. Thorson didn't need to be – I mean, Woodring made seven of seven extra points, didn't need to kick it. So not saying anything bad about him or anything like that. He's a freshman. He's going to get it figured out. Yeah, he definitely is. Yeah, like you said, Thorson is – he is – I mean – you might as well call him Thor because when he gets a ball, it just goes out into another universe somewhere. It really does. It that that definitely be traveling. So be fun to see how this could continues to shape out up there. Definitely so. But uh, before we get into other topics and a preview of that Auburn game, uh, you said earlier this week that, or actually right before we come on the show, that you have uh, kind of channel channeling your inner Burt Kreischer. Kind of explain to everybody what you mean by that. It's the red Kool-Aid. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, he wakes up and drinks drinks Kool-Aid. I always, that's my favorite um, scene from that sh- from his podcast, Two Bears, One Cave. So, oh, yeah. shout out to Bert. We, uh, you can be our sponsor anytime. Yeah, although he might need a sponsor, but a different kind of sponsor. So, <laughs> he is the machine. No but uh, he, yeah, the the Russian bear, if there ever was one. <laughs> If you guys, once again, if you guys don't know references, you guys should just Google these. Like, pause this pot. No, don't pause it. Finish no, don't this pause podcast. the podcast. And if you're finish this one, language, don't and watch go do it. that. Yeah. Yeah. Not safe for work for all. Not uh, safe for the... work, but definitely will listen to his Russian story, how he joined the Russian mafia. That was, there's a movie that came out about him that I meant to go see. So, yeah. I, I, I have it lined up, but I didn't go see it. So, but, yeah, same. um, you want to do, we had a couple NCAA things we're going to do. You want to you want to get into that, or you want to preview Auburn? Uh, just more or less, just going to say like that Clemson, that Clemson Florida State game, mm-hmm. that was fun to watch. Oh yeah, that was a good back and forth. I enjoyed it. Kind of was pulling for Clemson a little bit just cause for for the sake of yeah. chaos. Um, but Clemson pulled a Clemson when they don't have a a generational quarterback. Um. But they did okay. They did good in the Colorado Oregon game. I was about to say that nail biter out in uh, Eugene, Oregon, out there, right? Dan Lanning saying they're out here for clicks. We're out here for wins. I looked and went, well, it's over already. Mm-hmm. It's over. Like it's it's not even had to happen. And that's and, not necessarily true. I will defend Dion. He is out there for wins, but he's going about it a completely different way. That it's shaking up college football. It is but shaking up. This is what yeah. happens when you go against a team that is equal to or better than your skill set. Yeah, Colorado, this proved Colorado, what what I said that this was a four or five loss team. Oregon, USC next week. I definitely think Utah has the defense to stop them. Utah's not as good this year, but they're still good. Yeah, there some holes were opened. Um, that TCU game that tells me that TCU is better than we thought. Yeah. Um, or either that or they're worse than we thought because you know they got throttled last year by a superior talented team, and so that tells me the Big Twelve just struggling right now. Sorry, yeah. Texas, but I'm just going to say it. So, needless to say, I think you've – whatever you look at, it, it's going to be something to look for. Look at Dion and what he does from here on out. Good yeah. team, but they got a ways to, ways to go. And once again, you know, if if you're a fan of what Dion's doing or you're just kind of interested in it, I, I implore you to check out UAB and Trent Dilfer because, like I said, he's been doing it, I think, a year more than – uh, I thought this is his first year at is it? UAB. I thought it was year two. But it could, think, it could uh, be year one. But either way, he's doing a similar thing, just not quite to the – he's not doing the Dion version, which is the the upscale turn it to 11. He's doing about the seven and a half, and it's actually working. 
Yeah, th- uh, exactly. And this is Dilfer's first season at UAB. Okay. Um, he was feels at like Lips- he's been there longer. Yeah, he was at Lipscomb Academy in Nashville oh, that's right. That's right. in 19. And then, let's see. Yeah, in 2020. Yeah, so he basically, they wanted him up there, which I do think he, I think Trent's going to do a good job at UAB mm-hmm. because he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Trent's not, you know, if anything, it helps UAB get some, more, some higher exposure. So yeah. they're definitely in a good place. Yep, exactly. So let's move on to a uh, small preview in the last few minutes here. Uh, I guess we have more time than we want. I haven't seen the countdown go up. Either that, either, that either, or, so. either that or our producer fell asleep, which is very possible. Yeah. Uh, at least one of the producers here is asleep. I see him. The other one's awake over here eating and mm. just not disinterested today. Yeah. But, hey, Georgia finally gets a 3.30 kickoff. They've had some of these early games, which is usually not good for UGA fans. They're, You know, a lot of them went to Friday night lights, so it's hard for them to get up early and recover because tailgating starts about – seven hours before the game starts which yeah. is it's not me making a shot at them or nothing like that. that's just how a good tailgate goes oh no that is 100 percent. i've done a couple tailgates grilled some burgers one year georgia had a late game against a smaller opponent which i mean for the sake of just being cheap you, you want to go to those games too yeah. but yeah we just uh we started tailgating about 10 o'clock game was at like 6 37 so Long day, get to walk around campus. This was back before they finished building the new building. So, yeah, and that campus is fun to walk around too. So, yeah. But yeah, definitely. tailgating, it's it's good to see a 3.30 game. Is that game going to be on uh, CBS? That is a 3.30 CBS game. According okay, to this, so I, I UGA is CBS. only a 14 and a half point favorite. That's a shocker. I say well, that because Auburn it, did not have but, the best week what, last week. What is what has Auburn done so far this year? I know you had it pulled up. They are now. three. They are three and one. Yeah, they're three and one. But I'm looking. I'm also looking at their last game when they actually played a high. So they played UMass and they beat UMass fifty nine to fourteen. Yeah. They beat California fourteen to ten. Okay, they beat Cal- Samford. That's not that 40, special. So okay. No, they beat Samford forty five to thirteen, and they lost twenty seven to ten against Texas A and M. Okay. And that's, Texas A and M is the decent closest A and M squad. It's a decent A&M squad. You played, they played two different quarterbacks. I don't know the story why they're – they ran the ball good for what I'm looking at. They're a but team that if you, if you let them hang around, they can mm-hmm. beat you, and Auburn let them hang around, so they beat them. Yeah, and also when you really look at Auburn – I mean, when you look at Texas A&M, remember they lost a lot of talent mm-hmm. because they paid their players, and all those guys left because they didn't like what they saw. And this is a team that is getting used to having Bobby – I, I want to go for a motorcycle ride Petrino. Also, his name, name is Harley. But anyway, um, yeah, so they've got him. So I, I definitely think when it comes to that situation for um, – Texas A&M is not a bad school, bad team right now. They just – they're still learning, but they're not great. But they – they if anyone has a blueprint to how to beat Auburn now, you've got one. They, uh, they went 9 of 23 for 56 yards with three quarterbacks. Wow. They ran the ball for a, 41 times for 144 yards. They averaged three yards a carry. Georgia, just to give you an idea, Georgia, so Georgia allowed 3.3 yards per carry. Okay. That's very similar, but t- Georgia is the kind of team when you get if you get up on them enough, they're going you're going to force them to be throw the ball. So Georgia did give up 30 250 yards passing. If Georgia yeah. can shut down the running game, I think they can handle the passing game too. I'll just yeah. go ahead and throw a score out there for you. I, if Georgia shows up like they did and they control the turnovers, they don't make those mental mistakes you're looking at a i'll go ahead and say it we're looking at another 49 to 10 score because if if, if from what i that's got. if yeah if we struggle i think you see a 20 something to 10 kind of 10 or 17 kind of game mm-hmm. where we got to fight a little bit harder but if georgia plays georgia football it's it's another throttling and that's just the way georgia's that's the way kirby has built this team he's built to withstand these kinds of games so yeah, it's I had like uh, to see this place. I'd say 41-17, 40, 40, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe they get 20 points. I, I, I'm not real sure. I, I think UAB may be a slightly better team than Auburn right now, even at 3-1. and one. Get this They're up. the second best team in Alabama right now. Alabama and UAB. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I don't know. I haven't seen South Alabama this year. They were they always play tough in the Sun Belt, but I haven't played against the Sun Belt this year. So uh, get this for Auburn. So they get number one Georgia this week. They get uh, top 15 ranked 
LSU next week. They get Ole Miss the week after that. That's a crazy trio of strength right there. Let's not forget that they got Mississippi State the week after. Let's oh, yeah. go ahead and give which them some credit because, yeah. which is a tough game. So you look at this, I very conceivable. I know that I, I believe they're going to be losing two out of the next three minimum. Mm-hmm. If not three, I'd say three out of the next four. With I think Mississippi State might be one they pull out. Maybe, yeah. Um, that as my dad always says, that lucky horseshoe up their butt that, that Auburn seems to have when they play Georgia. So that's the mm-hmm. only thing that ever makes me nervous about Auburn. Um, but I definitely think Auburn's numbers are inflated right now because of the games they've played. LSU should throttle them. LSU's got a good squad. Ole Miss, I, I'll just go ahead and say it. Kiffin, Kiffin's gonna take. He's gonna be vengeful after that Alabama loss. So yeah. it, those next four games for them, it's gonna be a wild ride. Next four weeks for Auburn. Yeah, and then they eventually. Hugh have Freeze a... might need to go to the strip club to calm down. I wonder if there's a few of them out in there, Auburn. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't frequent those places, so I would or, not. Wait, know. are they? Pl- wait a minute. Sorry, this it it requires it bears asking. Okay, yes, they do play at home against Ole Miss. I was wondering if they were traveling. They do. Because yeah. <laughs> he knows where those are. Hmm. Might have been yeah. his contract. Who knows? But yeah, in Georgia, uh, we've got Kent- Auburn, Kentucky, Vandy, and Florida for our next four Ooh. games. That's that's still kind of an interesting stretch, right there. That's an interesting stretch. Um. Because you got you got Auburn, and then you got Kentucky, which is another tough team. You got Vanderbilt, who you can't sleep on them and look to the next week, or they could no, they could do some things. They can uh, quarterback Leary for Kentucky. That one that one's gonna make you nervous because he is good, but I will say he is turning the ball over a lot yeah. through four games, five picks. I think he's trying to do too um, much. He is rushing the ball. They've they're looking good passing. They're about where Georgia's at. I just say it, looking at it, they're, it looks evenly matched when you look at stats, but stats are confusing. Mm-hmm. Stats will always give, because Kentucky has beaten Ball State, Eastern Kentucky, Akron, and Vandy. If you're okay. throwing five picks in those four games, and now you got to play Florida, then Georgia, then Missouri, then Tennessee, bless you. Yes. Yeah. Kentucky's about to have a couple of rough weeks. Yeah, Georgia, Georgia, this is one of the toughest schedules I've seen them have, because like you said, Auburn this week, we got Kentucky after that, Vandy, you get Florida, who's currently ranked, Missouri, who's currently ranked, Ole Miss, Mm -hmm. who's currently ranked, Tennessee, who's currently ranked, and then a Georgia Tech team that has surprised a lot of people this year. Yeah, they surprised me that they're still alive. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. No, they're... They are. They're, you know, you you can't just bank on them to do the same old Georgia Tech stuff. They're doing quite the opposite. They they lost lost a close Louisville game. They beat Wake Forest, which mm-hmm. Wake is not the team we've we've seen off and on. No, but that's still an upset, and it was still that's a st- solid win. Yeah, solid win. Bowling Green next week, this week. Their season doesn't really – they got an easier schedule this year when you really look at it. Excuse me. They've got Miami. That should be a loss, to be honest with you, because Miami is looking good. Boston never College, know. you never know about Boston College. You never know right. about Carolina. I'll give, I give a shout-out to one team that I think is dangerous right now. That's going to be Syracuse. Yeah, the Orangemen. Yeah, now, they haven't played like a ton of game, a uh, big games. Like they got Clemson this week. That's gonna be. I think that's a fun game to watch. Garrett Schrader is looking good. Did you? I watched. Uh, was on TikTok before this. That play, those those fakes he ran against Purdue, best f- fake handoffs I've seen by a quarterback since David Green, back in the day. Hmm. And by the way, Schrader leads the team in rushing yards and passing yards. Did in case you were play? curious. Nope, they escape. They do not play Notre Dame this year. They get out of that one. Lucky tack on that one. Yeah. Oh, Garrett Schrader's out Ooh. right now. Is he... I, that, wait, that's seven months ago, so ESPN has not updated their website to say he's playing football. Go ESPN, go. Come on, ESPN. I know you you don't have a thousand employees anymore. You have about four hundred, but at least one of them can update that page, right? Yeah, you would think so. But uh, it, the assistant must be busy dinner time. But yeah, I think uh, going into this Auburn Auburn will be fun to watch. Um, they yeah. always are. They they're always a game that I I stress out over a little bit more than I should because it's Auburn. But yeah, I mean it'll it'll be a good weekend of football. Three thirty kickoff. See what happens. 
this is where Georgia really finds out who they are. I just think the offense is ready to explode. And I think that defense is finally, finally waking up. If we get Mike Hill back, we mm-hmm. get McConkey back. I think we also should get replaced uh, David Daniel Sisova, who is our safety and replacement for Javon Bullard. Getting Bullard back, that settles everything. You get your three big guns back, Georgia will be ready to rock. Yeah, Even if this is the first road game and it's at on the Plains, it's still something. Yeah, that's not an easy environment. I'll, I'll give them that. You know, that's that's not an easy place to play. That will give Auburn a little bit of a kick in their direction. But, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, it's you got 49-10. I got 41-17, something close to that. It's It should still – it might be close till halftime like Georgia games have been so far this year. But I think uh, that, that halftime adjustment that Kirby always does or that coming to Jesus moment, whatever happens at halftime. Yeah peel the paint off the walls, whatever he does. Maybe they just play Twister. I, I have no idea. Oh, yeah. No, and that's, that's something, and um, kind of a note, because the video didn't come out until after our last podcast. Um, did you see the cl- clip of Kirby talking at halftime as we no. as Georgia was losing South Carolina? Mm-mm. I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, the best part was Kirby was not angry. He did not yell. He didn't raise no. his voice. He talked like you and I are. Now, probably, I sound like I'm yelling, but he talked in a normal tone. The players talked first Kirby let the players the seniors handle business they no one was angry no one was upset they just looked at each other and went this isn't us this isn't Georgia let's go back out there and sir sure enough they turned the tide so that's if a calm Georgia team that's I told my dad that's scary if they were that calm there was no panic then you get the game we had this past week where they went out and took care of business early they let them back in and then they sealed the door that's and the fact they're starting to put it together. You put those defense, that second half defense against South Carolina, and the first first half and second half offense. Georgia, that's a team that can run away the rest of the year. Yep, it definitely can. But uh, last note, uh, I keep forgetting to say this: um, Friday nights, if you're in the West Georgia area, uh, hometown sports media has uh, added me to the lineup. I uh, am a part of their halftime and post game shows so this week will be at central high school so if you're a central high school this weekend watching the uh, central lions play then drop by and see me at the big tent you cannot miss that i uh, would love to chat we'll talk uga we'll talk georgia we'll talk and we'll talk falcons if you guys want to do that but um other than that i always want to make that announcement uh appreciate the opportunity from them appreciate the opportunity from you guys to be on here each and every week and talk mm-hmm. about the uga bulldogs but For the Trash Panda, Jake Skinner, I am Jeremy the Impact York. Shout out to all three of our producers that are probably knocking things off shelves right now. We will see you guys next week. Let's get a go dogs. Go dogs. See y'all next week.